We're going to go ahead and do a video on how to harvest tail hair for our Equitails jewelry. First, we're going to start with a bathing process to get the tails really white and clean. I'm doing a white tail because those are always the hardest ones to get the nicest and cleanest to send to us. Uh, black and brown can be minimally done with less products, but we want to go ahead and show the best you can do for a dirty yellow tail. We have a tail that's pretty yellow and dirty from being outside in the regular elements. Uh, this tail is typically white. You're going to try to get it as white as we can in preparations for harvesting. So we're going to go ahead and show you the whole process involved in this. Um, when you do a bay horse or horse with a black tail or chestnut tail, there'll be a lot less involved. You can use standard shampoos with that. Um, but we want to show you a white tail to see how clean we can get it. Um, and you will be using the interior parts, but they're still pretty yellow. So we will try to see how clean we can get this to uh, prepare and pull for harvesting. The first step that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and groom and brush the tail as best as possible, get the most knots out. So go ahead and take your brush and run it through the tail. Make sure you get all the interior and also go all the way to the tips. You want to make sure you brush before you bathe because it does help separate all of the hairs so all the cleaning products can get in there and make them really nice and clean and the best possible outcome for your harvesting. First we're going to go down the line of products that we're going to use for cleaning. You can also use these products on doing flaxen tailed horses or light colored tailed horses because it helps get them much cleaner than using standard shampooing processing. Um, what we'll do is start with the goop hand cleaner and we will put this on for about five minutes to let this set. You can find this product at Walmart. It is a lanolin based non-petroleum product so it's safe to use. Um, on the horses um, and we go ahead and that's a pre-treatment before you put any water on at all. This is first step. You put it on directly with uh, nothing else and we will show you the whole step process to go through everything. The second thing you can get is you can get a stain remover from your local store but you have to be very very careful when you put this on that you do not get it onto the actual tail itself. It just goes on the base of the hair from the tail head all the way down to the bottom on the ends of the hair. Um, we're really careful when we use um, anything with chemicals on the horses. So this is something that is to be used more on a professional sided basis. Um, but you make sure that you, you are watching it closely and rinsing it out in a convenient amount of time. Um, the next product is typical Dawn. It's an anti-degreaser. It's great for getting rid of all the oil buildup that can be naturally occurring in the horse's tail. Um, the thing is with the Dawn, you can pretty much use it on any horse and it really, really gets it nice and clean um, for us to do the hair braiding and stuff with. It doesn't leave an oily base. It leaves it really nice and strong and thick and clean. Um, the next product is if you have a white horse, you can add some of this whitening shampoo spray. This tends to help a little bit with brightening. Um, it's typical mane and tail everywhere you can find it. Um, next product is our little secret product, Germac Shimmering Lights. We get this product at the CVS local. It is the same thing as blue shampoo and we pay, instead of $12 a bottle at your local tax shop, we pay approximately $4 and it's the same blue shampoo that you would get anywhere at the horse shop. So. Go find that at your local CVS if you can, it's much cheaper. Lastly, for conditioning, after we're done with the tail washing, we like to condition the hair to make sure it's sent in the best possible condition to us. Um, as far as actual products, when the mane is done, as for harvesting, we just use regular rubber bands, you can pick those up, and a brush to make sure everything is nice and uh, brushed out. And those are all our products, and we'll go ahead and show you how to apply them next. Okay, the first step in the process is we'll be applying the Goop Hand Cleaner. Again, this is the product you find at Walmart. Um, it's the lanolin based product, and we're going to put it on a dry tail as a pre-treatment to help release the stains. We'll just take the Goop with our hand, it's like gelatin, and work it into the tail. This is a nice fun process and it takes a little bit of time, but it is well worth it for the results that you get out of it. When you have a dirtier part of the tail, you want to make sure you work those in, especially well to those areas. Main process that we're trying to get is the base of the tail down because that's the product we'll be harvesting. A portion of the tail that we'll be harvesting. 
So you want to make sure that you get it nice and goopy. This is fun for kids to do too, so if you have kids, bring them involved in this project because they'll love doing this. Also want to make sure that you work it down in the center of the tail too because it will, it's really proper to get it down into the inside of the tail. That's where you really want to get the cleanest part, the cleanest you can, and that's where you'll be harvesting from. The exterior parts are, of course, going to be more dirty. So we'll go ahead and make sure we get the whole tail. When you're done applying and getting this through all the way the tail, you will go ahead and leave it on for about five minutes to set, and then we'll come back and do our next step. When we're also applying, applying the goop, you want to go ahead and the dirtiest part of the tail, actually take it and use the tail to help you sort of do a scrub against itself in the fibers. This will help see all the dirt that it's releasing. It will actually help uh, it grind against each other and clean it almost like a detergent scrubbing manner in your, as like in a washing machine almost. You can see already how much, how much dirt this is lifting. The product that we have is already how much it's lifted out of the hair. The next product we're going to go ahead and use is the stain cleaner. Like I said, you have to be very, very careful not to get it onto the tail shaft itself just because it's chemical based and I'm really, really particular about being careful with these kind of products. Um, don't do this if you're amateur level. Try to stay on a professional end if you want to use this kind of stuff and be very careful as far as limiting the amount that you use. You only want to do it on the dirtiest parts, but it does help brighten it up some. So you're just going to go ahead and spray the product into the tail hair. Make sure you find the base of the tail and go from there down. Apply to the whole tail. This is along with the goop that is already in the tail. We're just going to have, you can see already it's starting to brighten it a little bit. It'll release also along with the goop. And it has a pretty good lifting power for hard to set stains. The white tails you will really, unless you bathe, you know, repeatedly three or four times over a course of three or four days, you're not going to get it pure white this first treatment, but if you do this over three or four days in a row on a white, white tail, you will get it pretty much pure white again. We're just going to show you the initial bathing, though, and to see how we can get it on one bathing process with a pretty dirty tail. All right, we're going to go ahead and start showing how we're going to put the additional shampoos in, the regular shampoos that you work with, um, because we've got all the goop and the stain product and we're just going to get a little bit of water in here. It's a light little wetting. You don't want to rinse the other product out, so you just get it lightly wet. We're going to go ahead and use our Germac Blue Shampoo first and just go ahead and apply it just like regular blue shampoo. Work it all through the hair. And after you get this in and worked in very good, you can leave it for another couple minutes or so to set. And this will help lift as well. And you want to make sure you add a good, good amount of this as you do with any blue shampoo and gray horses or white horses. And it will start to help lift also along with the other product that you put in it already. Okay, we're going to go ahead and talk about this product. If you want to use it along with your regular shampooing process, you can. I would put this in after the blue shampoo and work it in. Um, it's spray on shampoo, but you can also use it actually with wet shampoo. It just, just helps brighten it. We're not going to use it this time, but they also have regular product that you can put in as well. But this is another option if you want to try another additional product to get uh, even whiter. This is pretty much regular Dawn. We, everybody has it in our cabinet at home. We use it a lot around the barn to clean tails uh, or regular even shampooing. Um, you do have to make sure that after you use it that you do use a conditioner because it does strip out all the oils and grime and dirt, but it does a very, very good job of cleaning the tail and getting all of the uh, 
dirt and grime that is left on the oils out. So we have a nice, clean, good product on our tail when we are working with it afterwards. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to just apply, just like regular. You don't need a lot because a little goes a long way, as we know. And just down with the other shampoos that are already in it. And we'll go ahead and lather it up. And it'll help just release everything that's in there and work it all in. You already see the tail, how much lighter it's getting with everything that we have. So go ahead and scrub that up, and then we're going to do a regular rinse on it when we get done. Okay, now that we've gotten all our shampoos and pre-treatments in, we're going to go ahead and do a standard rinse on the tail. Just get everything out that you can, starting at the top. Spraying deep in the tail. You really want to get all of the product out that you can. Still see, we do have some yellowing, like I said. The big thing with the yellowing is if you want to get a lot of the deep, the exterior yellow out, you will have to do this three or four days in a row. Especially for show prep, this is what we do. We'll pre-treat and do three or four days of this ahead of time and we'll get the tail pretty white. But the main thing for the harvesting is we need to get the interior tail white, which you can see is pretty, pretty clean once we get it rinsed out. So we'll go ahead and show you what it looks like. Okay, the next product we're going to use is mane and tail conditioner. Uh, just standardly apply it, just like a regular conditioner. It does help. Um, the tail can be sort of dry after doing all of these products on it to clean it. So it just helps bring a little bit more moisture back into the tail and conditions it some, uh, make it easier and better for us when we go ahead to work with the hair. So I'm going to go ahead and just apply it just like regular conditioner, let it set for a few minutes, and then rinsing it out. The last thing we're going to do before we finish is rinsing the tail out from conditioner. It's been sitting for a few minutes. You can already see how much lighter and whiter the tail is. It's going to be a lot cleaner when we do the harvesting in the inside of the tail. So just rinse this out. After you do a good rinse, then you're going to go ahead and just let the tail dry, and then we'll come back and show you how to harvest the tail. All right, now that we've had time for the tail to dry, we'll go ahead and brush it. You can see how clean it got. Pretty good for a first time treatment. Like I said, if you do more bathing a couple days in a row, we'll get a lot whiter. But this is pretty good. This is what we've got for end result. Um, good enough to go show, pretty much, if you want. Um, we do it a couple days before to get them pure white. Um, like I said, two or three days before, if you do a bathing like this on these tails, we'll get them pretty crystal white. I'm going to show you three different methods for harvesting hair. Any of them will work, it's just preference. Uh, just use your regular rubber bands. Make sure you have a couple. I store them in my mouth. First way that we can do is what you want to do is you want to go to the interior depths of the tail hair because that's where the whitest pieces are and you want to make sure you get from the base of the tail because the longest pieces are what we're going to need. So if you look at the tail where the base goes to and I usually pull out, this is where I want to get the tail hair from. So that's the best, me best method to find where you want to look for good tail hair. And it's also the cleanest, too. So what we're going to do, method one that you can do, is regular straight pulling, which I'm going to do a small section because I don't like to pull my girls' tails very much, so because it's not fun for them. But you would just take a section and pull straight from the ends and then straighten the ends out and you'll have your roots. That will be your length of hair that you will have, and you'll band that up. That's method one. Method two is a little bit more of an easier route, and it gives you a little bit of a, uh, when it grows out, it'll be a little bit more uh, easier to, to see rather than so blunt. Um, it'll be almost along the lines of if you pulled it, you take a pair of scissors right close to the base where you're at, and you go up and down and razor it, and you get a little chunk, separate it, smooth your ends, and then you have your piece of hair. That's method two. Method three, which is my least favorite method, and I will do a very small piece for you because I do not like to do this, <coughs> is you go and you take a blunt cut of the hair, and you do a small piece and cut the hair. So you have a straight cut that you will have of hair. Those are the three methods that you use. Now, particularly what I like to do, and we're going to harvest a chunk that I would need. My favorite method, I think it's the least involved, is to go ahead and do the scissor method on a nice good chunk. I usually get my finger and I wrap it around and I get a 
right again, remember you pull your tail out, go to the deepest parts, let the rest fall, shake it loose so you're getting to your interior pieces, sectioning away everything, and this is where you're going to want to pull from. But if you get a nice little grouping of hair, about a dime or pinky size width chunk of hair, this is what we're looking for, if you can see in my finger. This is typically usually enough for me to do a nice section of hair for a bracelet or a necklace. I take it and I would just scissor this whole chunk. It doesn't hurt the horses like pulling. And there's my chunk. After I get the chunk, I will go ahead and double band it at the ends for keeping. And you just go ahead and finish that up. Put two bands on it. And then we're almost done. Final touch that you can do. I don't worry about the ends. I can finish those and leave those be. Is to finish the hair, you'll take it and roll it up all nice. And then this is the, the piece that you'll take and put into a Ziploc bag and mail to me. So this will bring beginnings of what will become your bracelet for your horse and your Equitail. So that's the whole process, and I hope to see your tail in the mail soon.